Happy Holidays, everybody! Today we have a special deck spotlight for this festive season. Christmas Ramp, named for its festive red-green colors, is a very powerful anti-meta deck that has been flying under the radar but showing up more and more recently. If you'd like to take down the ever-popular black-red hero-slash-holiday spirit killer, then give this deck a shot, as its Christmassy spirit and card selection is very good for the matchup. Let's take a look at what this deck has to offer. This deck utilizes the strongest cards from both of its colors, which complement each other nicely. The red color provides the deck with hard-hitting heroes, removal, and time of triumph. While the green color provides the deck with ramp options like Stars Align and Salamani's Favor. Your primary game plan will be to play your ramp cards while surviving on board with your beefy heroes to get to your late game. Once you have the mana, cast Time of Triumph to make your heroes unkillable and beat your opponent in the face with the Christmas Spirit. Since this deck doesn't have burst damage, you will usually rely on taking two towers instead of spending time fighting the Ancient. Let's take a look at the heroes. Your starting lineup is comprised of excellent round 1 fighters that can immediately give you an advantage if they flop correctly. Santax post nerf is still an extremely formidable fighter with an excellent signature, while Briss Elfback needs to be in there early to get his passive going. Treant Protector is an obvious inclusion here due to his Christmas tree-like appearance. Following up on round 2, we have the Grinchus herself, Drow Ranger, who is sure to suck any holiday joy out of your opponent with her excellent passive and signature. And lastly, we have Legion Commander, another strong fighter with an exemplary signature that in this type of deck is a very cheap removal spell. After the recent card balance changes, this archetype has become more flexible in its hero positioning, and the order can be moved around to suit your preference. Axe and Legion Commander are particularly interchangeable depending on how much you prioritize killing 7 or 8 health heroes or sustainability. Briss Elfback is another key inclusion thanks to the new card changes. Post Axe nerf, we need more well-statted heroes early to battle Red Black's lineup. Bristle with his 8 attack can one-shot many heroes and his signature, while not the strongest, can assist in doing so as well. Taking a look at the main deck, your ramp options enable late game cards like Spring the Trap to be played. We have said time and time again that multi-lane cards are very powerful and you can see it highlighted in Spring the Trap. Having two 4-8s in any lane is a great mana sink to use from the lane that you are already ahead in. Mists is another one of those powerful green cards that doesn't see much constructed play lately. Left unchecked, it can really get out of control, and since it is a modification, your units that respawn will keep the bonus throughout the game. When placing, try to anticipate a lane that will be fought over to increase the results of the buff. The deck has so many powerful improvements that your opponent might not have the resources necessary to deal with this particular one, so it could stay out longer than it should. Card draw is a premium and hard to come by in these colors, but still necessary so we have one copy of Unearthed Secrets in this deck. Most people play around with the number of Mists and Unearthed Secrets in their deck, and the number changes depending on preference and the kind of meta that you are expecting. Previous variations of this deck included three copies of Smash Their Defenses, a fantastic tool that gets the job done and replaces itself in your hand. With the decline of blue-green combo, the need for improvement removal is not as immediate, and the number is reduced to two for this iteration. However, Ignite, Agnum Sanctum, and the Oath are still present threats that exist, so be sure to knock those down before their effects pose a threat. Finally, let's talk about the most important card in the deck, Time of Triumph. While a fantastic finisher, it's an even better comeback mechanic. Like Mists, the keyword here is Modify, so you can get additional value out of the card if the heroes move to other lanes and fight there as well. Time of Triumph has a lot of versatility and is useful in almost all of the situations that you are able to cast it. Getting it early with Salamane's favor will give you a huge lead over your opponent, so take those opportunities when they present themselves. To keep with the theme of this deck, make sure to send a custom message to your opponent saying ho ho ho, Merry Christmas every time you play this card. Emissary of the Quorum serves a similar purpose to Time of Triumph, because it also costs 8 mana and permanently makes your hero stronger. However, it is not as good as a comeback tool and will only be highlighted in longer, grindier games. Stars Align will be your primary way to cheat out your late game cards early, and when done so, can really shift the entire game in your favor and put the pressure on your opponent to react. Cast Stars Align into a Time of Triumph almost every time you can, if it can buff at least 3 heroes. Your item deck is on the simpler side, since we aren't too focused on killing heroes early and sucking the joy out of the holiday season. The Signet Ring acts as another cloak here, making you effectively have 5 cloaks, to better protect heroes and cycle to those needed blink daggers. Here we choose the cheaper health items, but you can play other more robust options such as Stonehall Cloak if you prefer, as they are generally interchangeable. The new Jasper Daggers is a recent inclusion here, being much cheaper than before and with a powerful new effect. Purging opponent's effects includes effects such as Silence and Stun, meaning Jasper Daggers can counter Gust and Earthshaker's passive, although only once. Remember though, if you get Gusted after you equip the item, it will have no effect. We only have one in our deck, but adding another might make sense if more debuff effects move their way into the new meta. Having more than that would hurt your item deck, since you want Blink Daggers to be your main weapon slot item. 
Red Green Ramp has the potential to be the strongest deck in the game, but is mostly held back by the fact that Christmas only comes around once a year and its inconsistent opening hand. When starting the game with Ramp and Payoff cards, this deck can apply tremendous pressure to keep your opponent on the back foot the entire game. However, when you don't draw the right cards, you will be left there sitting with a hand of coal while your opponent keeps hitting your tower. You can try to play around this by constantly trying to pressure your opponent, causing them to make suboptimal plays. Use your cheap tempo cards such as Duel and Gust to reliably rid of their heroes and advance your board state. This will be the primary way you deal with red block decks before you can modify your heroes to be basically unkillable. Christmas Ramp is slightly simpler than the other decks that we have featured on this channel, but has powerful tempo and combo plays that you constantly need to be evaluating. This might include making odd plays, such as placing your green hero in a lane where it might die instantly, but casting Selimane's favor to set up a 6 mana time of triumph in a different lane. With the decline of blue-green combo, this deck is currently very well positioned in the meta, as it should be. Nothing should counter Christmas. Mono Blue, a deck that has been growing in popularity recently and not hit with any nerfs, typically wins one lane by chip damage and Bolt of Damocleasing the other. However, our Christmas deck can fight all three lanes at the same time thanks to the poor stats of blue heroes. Having initiative with cards like Duel and Berserker's Call can easily silence the opponent before they can play their board wipes. Having said all that, the matchup is still uncertain, and you will need to kill them as quick as possible because once they reach 10 mana, there is little you can do to stop them from winning. Our deck is quite flexible with its card selection, not only hero ordering. I have seen Lycan and Omni Knight played instead of Drow to be more board centric and proactive. You could also have Beastmaster instead of Bristleback if you want a more defense heavy setup. Tidehunter is another inclusion that provides a signature that can be used to steal initiative from the mono blue decks to counter their annihilation turns. Enough Magic is another cool tech card that has been seeing some play. After the changes to Gust, Enough Magic can act as a sort of pre-nerf Gust, however symmetrical. Christmas Ramp has many possible additions and variations. Experiment and let us know what works best for you. Thanks for watching and subscribe for future spotlights. Happy holidays and we'll see you next time.